Number 20 on the AMC 10. Okay, we've this is actually considered a, a little bit of a, like a long problem in terms of the calculation, but there's a, it's not too bad if we use some smart tricks to do it. So McDonald's is located, we've got a circular cylinder with diameter 20 meters, or I just marked the radius 10 because that's going to be easier to use. Okay, McDonald's is located 20 meters west and 15 south. Okay, so 20 west, so let's see what that looks like. 20 west, that would be like right here, you know, the wrist radius is 10, so 20 west and then 15 south, so that would be like there, right? That would be 20 west and 15 south. And then McGregor is located 20 east, 20 east, that would be like, it's a symmetric thing, right? <laughs> That's not what I was trying to draw. 20 east and 15 south, okay, uh, or sorry, 20 east and G south this time, so G is an unknown variable, we know it's greater than zero. So 10 and then 10. The line of sight between, okay, let's say McDonald, let's say Donald and Gregor. So D and then G is tangent to the silo. So this line is tangent. Okay, that's, that's an interesting condition, right? I don't know why that's doing that, but <laughs> let's try drawing that again. There we go. It's tangent to the silo and we're trying to find G basically. So clearly we want to draw all our important radii. That should be 10, right? 90, 90. Hmm. So there's kind of like a few ways you can go about this for sure. One way is you can impose coordinates, which is not too bad, I think, because we have, you know, these perfectly right number triangles. Another way, which is, I think, a little bit cleaner than coordinates is just using similar triangles. So like, like would be like, not like that, but like something like, this and then right so we want to kind of use some similar triangle stuff here g and then okay, let's just say this is like some other variable let's call that x right we've got a bunch of similar triangles here we've got a lot of potentially useful information right first thing okay we're trying to solve for g right but we're going to need to probably find x too First thing, maybe we ignore this triangle. Let's just look at these pairs of triangles, right? And then using this, we can solve for x because we know these triangles are similar. So let's just go, let's go this to this. Let's go short leg to long leg. So that's, that's kind of the way I like to think about similar triangles, short leg to long leg or short leg to hypotenuse. But I think short leg to long leg is of course much computationally easier here. 15 over 40 plus x equals short leg to long leg. 10 over, okay, this is where it gets a little bit little bit on the artist side so 10 over and we would have okay this is 20 plus x this is 10 let's use pythag theorem right so x plus 20 squared equals 10 squared plus something squared so x squared plus 40 x plus 300 equals something squared we would have that this is just equal to x squared plus 40 x plus 300 and now we just expand and we're going to obviously have to square to get rid of our square root right we want to get rid of that square root because then we can just get a quadratic 400 plus 10 x we square this whole thing out and first of all let's just before we even square let's divide out by 5 why deal with this extra factor of 5 80 plus 2x so then we get 9 times x squared plus 40 x plus 300 and then let's just say this is equal to we square that out, 2x plus 84x squared plus 320x plus 6400. 5x squared plus 360x minus 320x, that's 40x, plus 2700 minus 6400, that's minus 3700. And we can divide out by x again, x divide out by 5, I mean equals zero and then here's like a little bit of the guess and check part we know this is 37 times 20 we want to get we want to get like these two things that differ by eight okay so 37 times 20 okay this does not quite work okay actually this one hmm, this one probably isn't factorable because we tried 37 20 we can try 74 and 10 you know it's, it's not going to get that close but we actually see here that it might just be cleaner to use a difference of squares approach so we let's say we do this minus 756 equals zero so x, it's not going to actually be the easily factorable here. So, and then we get, okay, x plus four equals uh, plus or minus root seven, five, six, root seven, five, six. It's just going to be 
378. Okay, it's 378 divided by that 189. So that's 2 root 189. Okay, we can actually factor out an, another 9 here. So we factor out 9, so that's 21. So then we move 6. So x plus 4 is plus 4 is equal to plus or minus 6 root 21, or equal to negative 4 plus or minus 6 root 21. So these are our possible, and of course we're going to take the plus 1, we're not going to have a negative value of x. So this is our possible value here, 6 root 21 minus 4. That is the value of x. Okay, and now we're trying to solve for g, that's what we're really trying to find here. So how are we going to set up, what's the easiest similar, remember we're, there's probably a bunch of ones we can use. We can use g over x, right? Short leg to long leg. What if you consider this short leg to long leg? Mm, probably not the greatest idea, because now we're going to have to use Pythag again. Or this short leg to long leg, which is rel relatively clean. So 15 over 40 plus x. So 15x over 40 plus x. And we know x, right? It's four, 6 root 21 minus 4. So 15 times 6 root 21 minus 4 over 40 plus that. So then 6 root 21 plus 36. And... Okay, this is just a little bit of computation here. Not, not too bad, nothing crazy. We just have to multiply the top and the bottom by 6 root 21 minus 36. Okay, 6 root times 6 root 21 minus 36. 6 root 21 minus 36. And we get, okay, bottom is 6 root 21 squared. That is 36 times 21, right? 6 squared times 21. 36 times 21, that's 36 times 20 plus 36. Six, so seven five six and i'm just trying to walk you through kind of like the mental math shortcuts that you can use here because you're probably not going to have time especially in such a time intensive problem to you do this like you're going to take a long time to do this calculation here so yeah the easiest way is just seeing that okay six six through 21 squared and then minus 36 squared so 756 minus okay minus we have to do minus 30 minus 36 squared here, which would be 1, 2, 9, 6. And then on the top, we would have 15 times here. But actually, we see 6 root 26 is actually negative. So 6 root 21 minus 36 is negative. So we would probably just want to flip that one. Flip the sign in the numerator, flip the sign in the denominator. So we would get the denominator is now 540. The numerator is just even more calculation. Okay. First of all, 15 times this product over 540. We divide that out, we get 1 over 36, right? Because 30, 540 is 30 times 18, or 15 times 36. So that's 1 over 36 times that product. Okay, we're looking close. Now we just have to do that product. Okay, so 6 root 21 minus 4. And then let's say m minus 6 root 21 plus 36. Okay, we this one, 36 times 21, that's minus 7, 5, 6, right? And then plus 36 times 6 through 21, and then plus 4 times 6 through 21, right? So that's going to be plus, plus 24, 60 times 6 through 21, so that's 360 root 21. Let's just double check here. We want to be careful here. Minus 6 through 21. Okay, that's 24 root 21. Okay, that is 216 root 21. Okay, 20. That would be 24 root 21 plus, oh, no, 216. So that, careful to check here. Plus 240, that should be. Yeah, so because 216 plus 24, yeah, that seems good. And then minus 144. Okay, and then this is minus 900 plus 240 root 21. And then we're dividing all of this by 36, of course. Okay. Yeah, this is definitely one problem you want to be just extra careful about not screwing up. Very, very easy to mess up for sure. I think I already almost messed up a few times. So then, okay, divide by 12 to the top and bottom. Can we divide by 12? Yes, we can. 900 divided by 12, that's 300 divided by 475. And then 20 root 21 over, and let's see if that fits our format. A root B, A root B, 20 root 21 minus 75 plus three. That's 41 plus 75, that's 100. 41 plus 75 plus three, that's 41 plus 75 plus 3, 78 plus 49, 100 and 119. 119. So yeah, that is the final answer for this question. It's just really a long computation here. It's nothing very, nothing very pleasant to do here. But the key idea, which made it a lot simpler, is 
just focusing on first finding x and then finding g and then making sure we, we make our calculation as easy as possible by using the easiest possible pair of similar triangles we can use, the most computationally efficient pair of similar triangles that does not make our calculation impossible to do. So yeah, hope you enjoyed this video. Bye.